All right, guys, so I just kind of want to show you what we're going to do with this little Dobie pup here. So we got a sweet little puppy. Basically, this dog came to us because it's uh, kind of being a terror to its family. So it's biting, biting the mom, and it's just playful biting, mouthing, really. But I want to show you, like, what we do to, like, get these dogs started. So first off the bat, like, I don't, I don't really care, and I don't want to get too technical with the puppy because if you're too scientific, then we're kind of failing to just like be this little dog's friend and stuff. So I just want, first of all, don't pet him when he jumps on me, or don't pet her when she jumps on me, and then I just want to give her a treat when she comes to me. So if she gets inappropriate with paws, what I'm going to start doing is going away from her, make sure she loses on that. So, um, so yeah, when she gets bossy, she loses me. Now, corrections like that, so, so what I would call a negative punishment aren't really effective like immediately like a positive punishment would but that's kind of what's right for a puppy so so oops good 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 okay good good girl good girl good girl um so long term what you're not rewarding and what you're what you're ignoring is going to be more more important to that dog than what you're actually correcting because not very many people can correct consistently. It's a little easier to like to reward consistently. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's the case. Oftentimes, you know, we're making, yeah, yeah, So I'm going to start waiting for her to look up at me in the face, and then I'm going to be rewarding that now because I don't know. For those of you who haven't been around very many Dobermans, Dobermans are notoriously avoidant. If they if they know their stress or if they know something's being asked to them, they'll be hesitant to give you eye contact. Um, and so, if you start your pup out like this, you're kind of you're you're lessening the possibility of that dog being really avoidant, avoiding your eye contact and all that stuff. So, so now I'm going to start kind of a name game, and this is really just playing with the puppy, guys. So there's there's some things that are happening here that are technical, and some things that are just fun. Good girl. Good. Good sit. Good sit. Okay. Good girl. Good girl. So. So that's teaching the okay command right there. So what I did, I released the dog on okay, and I made her come forward. So in the future, what that translates to is me saying okay, and the dog coming to me to get either affection or a reward. Sit. So, so that's what I did right there is I got her in a sit, kind of gave it a word, and then I, I started building the, the implied stay into the command right there. Now, what that means is I let the dog look at me. So we'll get a sit. Good. Good. Good girl. Good girl. And then next time she looks at me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell her, okay, and I'm going to pull her away by creating negative space. Okay. So, so when I go away from a dog like that, I create a puppy vacuum. They run to me because that's what puppies genetically are programmed to do. Good girl. So now I'm just going to kind of free shape her behavior. I'm going to see if she's going to sit on her own for me. And if she does, I'm going to reward it make it more likely to happen again in the future. Good. Now what we're doing right now is kind of a psychological thing. So she came up to me and she just stood there and was like, hey, make with the treat trainer. Um, what I want to do is maybe change that relationship a little bit and, and help her be a little bit more of a proactive thinker. So what I want is to wait for her to actually do something that, that she knows that I consider a good behavior. And I want to reward that. So, 
this can depend on appetite. This dog can be full. Like right now, she, it might be that she has to use the bathroom, so she's sniffing around for a place to go. What I want to do is I want to be a little more pressing. I'm going to wait. Good. There's this. This is kind of a waiting game, but what happens is we're, we're making our little mind think, how do I get that food? And good. dog's leash. That way when she jumps up, it's going to kind of be a self-limiting thing. So we're going to try this a couple times. This is, might be a little bit boring to watch, but, but it's a little bit of a game. Like, how interested are you in the food? Will you work for it? Good. 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 So now, if she, when she does go down, what I do is wait for it, and then the second that little elbow hits the ground, I will I'll feed her at that exact moment. So timing is pretty important there. It's not important in the first couple reps if we say the word. What is important that we're rewarding the behavior. <coughs> because her little bottom came off the ground. So when I go away like that and I do it enough times, pretty soon the dog's like, wow, like losing patience and standing up actually nets me a loss. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of sit down. Good. Now if you watch, she may do this or may not. Um, one of these times when we do this, we're gonna see her start to get up and sit back down. And that's a really key that's an important point, so kind of hold on to that. Once you see that dog thinking, um, good, good. Now when we go down, watch your bottom. Dog training can help you. Sit. kind of kind of had too long of a session still. So so when we do this, like I want to find a good way to end on a on a note. Because some dogs 
will come come out and learn sitting down in one session. Some dogs don't, and if they don't, I don't worry about it because there's never a dog that you can't teach to down fairly quickly. So what we need to do right now in this session is find a good way for this dog to end on a good note. So, so either offering up the behavior and getting rewarded for it if we like, or even just like sitting politely. So once we see that, we're gonna go ahead and reward it and probably jackpot her and then end it right there. Good. Good girl. Sick? Good. Good girl. Good girl. Then I reward on the release. Okay. Good. And then we jackpot right there. Good girl. So, so sometimes it can be a little bit frustrating if you know that a dog's on a cusp, but you're also getting a dog that's filling up with treats, so they're kind of getting where they're not really that much more interested in you. Um, so this dog is pretty interested, but also like the stress of me teaching her a new thing and, and me not knowing this dog at all also makes it to where there's a little bit of pushback, like ah, I don't know if I want to lay down right now. And keep in mind when you're teaching a dog to lay down that this is the most most vulnerable and the most uh, submissive position a dog can take. So they don't really, they don't typically like take to the down as quickly as they do with the sit. So thank you guys for watching.